uh, we just had a, a, a really sad and horrific thing happen in our nation. Uh, I likened it to 9-11, personally. Uh, it feels that way to me. It feels uh, that uh, that level of hopelessness h- here for me. Uh, I can understand that. Uh, I'm talking about, obviously, I'm talking about the uh, elementary school shooting in Uvalde, Texas that uh, killed 19 children. And, right. Yes, and two teachers in the... Wounded his grandmother, too. Right. She <laughs> was fortunate to survive. Right. Uh, now, law enforcement officers killed the shooter, who was identified as 18-year-old Salvador Ramos, who mm-hmm. had earlier shot and wounded his grandmother and uh, spelled out his plans in online messages shortly before the massacre at Rob Elementary. Uh, investigators don't know his motive yet uh like me like rev said earlier uh, the attacker shot his 66 year old grandmother in the face at their uvalde home and then fled in her truck as she summoned help according to the governor greg ambit and uh texas safety public safety director steve mccraw a short distance afterwards he crashed his truck outside of, of the school Rob Elementary got out with a rifle and approached the back door. The officials have said they said an officer assigned to the school engaged Ramos, but the gunman got into the building and down the hallway to a fourth grade classroom. After locking the door, he uh, opened fire around 11:30 a.m. with an AR-15 style rifle ca- carrying multiple magazines. Um, a team, including local officers and border patrol agents, ultimately forced the door open and shot Ramos to death after he fired at them. Other officers and responders shattered some of the school's windows so that the teachers and students could escape. Wow, that's horrific. Um, he was wearing a tactical vest, but it, not body armor, according to state senators who said they were briefed on the shootings. There was another AR-15 style rifle in his truck, so he was ready. He had a plan and he was ready. And a backpack with several magazines full of ammunition that were found near the school entrance. Oh God, Rev. This is a this is a, a, a all around horrific situation. Yeah. Uh, you were probably here when, when, when this was unfolding, weren't you? Yeah. And uh of course it was, you know, it was the the news story, the top story nationally, regionally, locally. Um, I even got uh, a few calls that, you know, said, well, why is everybody up in arms about this one? But they weren't up in arms about the grocery store in Buffalo, which Lots I pointed out was not true. Arms. Lots of people were up in yeah. arms about that. You know, that wasn't true. I hate true. those people. Let me, let me just say this really quick. I hate those people. Why, why are you doing These are children. Stop with the nonsense, but go ahead, Rev. I'm sorry. You know, but at the same time, yes, the notion that children in a school would suddenly become, you know, murder victims. Right. That that hits you on a level that's different from people at a grocery store or people at a gas yeah. station. Yeah. Adults. Yeah. There, there's a difference there. There is definitely I a difference it. there. It's just like. There's a difference between hearing about two people getting into a fight and somebody stabbing somebody in front of a liquor store and somebody doing it in the hospital. Right. <laughs> you know, there's just a difference because of the location, because of the, the setting and the things that are ordinarily expected of those particular settings. And then, you know, there is in the aftermath the questions of what could have been done differently, what could we have done better, what could we have done faster. And yet, with every suggestion that it, particularly when it comes to school violence, every suggestion that's been presented, and some of them have been applied. We have school districts that have uh, defined their schools as gun-free zones, mm-hmm. and that doesn't seem to stop, you know, perpetrators. No, because they don't care about your law. They do not. <laughs> they literally do not care. If they don't care about the Ten Commandments, they certainly don't care about your gun-free zone. After not. all, the most you can do is if you bust them with a gun is as probably in fact that probably would be 
having a gun on school property is probably a misdemeanor mm-hmm. or a low-level felony. So you, you give them a fine. You might give them a little time in county jail. And yet the, the penalty for bearing false witness is literally eternal death. Right. Eternal separation from God. Eternal destruction in the lake of fire for bearing false witness against your neighbor. And they're not worried about that. So they're certainly not going to be worried about your two to five months in the city jail. Right. And then if it gets to the worst of worst, they go in and shoot some folk. Well, guess what? Okay, maybe they'll get life in prison. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe they'll get shot and killed. Mm-hmm. That does happen. But you know what? They really don't seem to care about that. I've yet to see one situation where any person involved in that kind of action begged not to be shot. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes the cops did arrest them because they surrendered. Sometimes they didn't surrender, and they were killed in a blaze of glory. But I've yet to see one account of any one of those shootings where the shooter, before he was arrested, was begging the cops, please don't kill me. Right, right. They seem to not care about that sort of stuff. And what can you do to people who don't care? Right. How do you stop someone who doesn't care? I, I absolutely uh, agree. I think a lot of people just want they just want some answer. Easy yeah. any any easy answer. Okay, let's just ban guns. Okay, let's just uh it's uh video games. Yeah, it's video games. No, it's Marilyn Manson. No, it's gangster rappers. No, it's um you know, uh Ron Johnson who is an awful human being. Uh today blamed it on CRT and uh woke classrooms. Uh Candace Owens uh, falsely stated that the guy was transgender and tried to blame it on that as if the Columbine killers and the guy who just shot up the supermarket and all these other people were, were transgender as well. Look, hmm. everybody wants an easy way out. There is no easy way out of this. Okay. Uh, I was thinking about this earlier this week while it was happening. I do think gun, some form of gun control will happen eventually at some point. The Democrats won't be able to stall even once at some point once they get into office and will actually have to do some governing and won't be able to kick it back to the Supreme Court or something or, or whatever. And uh, people are going to be shocked when the shootings keep happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. They will. And the reason they'll be shocked when it keeps happening is because They've been led to believe that the the biblical answer is false. The biblical answer is simple. People sin because people are sinners. People don't love keeping the law. They actually uh, resist the law in ways large and small. And that unless you have something that comes from outside of us to transform us, we won't be transformed. We won't be made perfect by uh, cultural pressure, by human wisdom, by legal theories, by anything save an outright intervention from outside of ourselves. That's what the gospel is in its essence. It's, it's the declaration that an outsider intervenes to change a person so that what is otherwise impossible to do becomes doable Mm. imperfectly because even the saints don't keep the law perfectly, but they recognize their imperfection and repent of it, whereas those who are not in that category call good evil and evil good. They justify ungodliness. If we banned guns and ammunition today, we would be in the same boat as we were the day that they banned alcohol. Yep, that's what I always compare it to. 